Welcome to Ask a Fear Online. Today we're going to cover uh, some homemade dairy products. I will show you how to make some uh, simple dairy products, uh, ricotta cheese, which is beautiful for uh, baking and pastry or for fillings for on top of puff pastries, also for cakes. Uh, then we're going to make fresh yogurt, uh, where you actually have to have a little bit of yogurt or you buy actually the bacteria, uh, but it works for fresh yogurt as well. And then we're going to make uh, some cream fresh. Cream fresh, very much like uh, mascarpone, very good for desserts, very refreshing, especially in hot summer days. So let's get started right away because some of these processes take a while. We're going to start out with the ricotta. Uh, it's a soft cheese uh, you can make at home. You will have to have a uh, pot. And uh, in this pot, you will put uh, four cups of whole milk. and uh, two cups of cream, heavy cream. Uh, about uh, one teaspoon of uh, salt. And um, in the meanwhile, while this is gonna start uh, boiling, we're actually going to be setting up <coughs> a pot here. And in this pot, there is a sieve. And in this sieve, I put two layers of moistened uh, cheesecloth. This is actually the pot or the setup where the cheese curds are actually going to be um, well, caught, if you want to say so. So we have our ingredients in the pot now. That means we are waiting for that to uh, start boiling or come up to a boil. Crank this up here a little bit. And the last thing we are adding when it is hot is actually the vinegar. So we're going to have to stir this a little bit so the salt is all incorporated. And we want to bring this to a boil. So as I said, the ricotta can be used for any kind of desserts. Uh, we use mascarpone cheese. Uh, also for cakes, very good. Uh, after uh, the boiling process, it's going to have to stand and react with the vinegar. So. While this happens, we will go ahead and start making our fresh yogurt. Actually, this is going to, oh, it's coming up to temperature, let's see. We should see some bubbles here shortly. So the heavy cream contributes some fat. The salt is going to start changing. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to produce cheese curds and whey. All right. Maybe while we're waiting for that, because this seems to be taking a little bit, we're going to actually do the um, cream fraiche because that's actually a very, very simple process. So for the cream fraiche, we need only two ingredients. We have here heavy cream, about a cup of heavy cream, and two to three tablespoons of buttermilk. And these are actually all the ingredients you need for uh, cream fresh. All you have to do is actually mix these together. And you cover that up with a towel 
and you keep it in a draft-free place for 12 to 16 hours. And you can already tell that the texture of the heavy cream is different, or is getting different. And what happens after about um, 12 to 16 hours is that your cream fresh starts thickening. And this is actually your finished product. As you can see, it is um, thickening the buttercream, uh, sorry, the buttermilk bacteria starts thickening the heavy cream. So it's a very refreshing um, dairy product you can use for parfaits on top of uh, cakes, fillings, and so forth. So that would be um, your cream fresh. Let me kind of put this aside here. I'm going to look at our. I can see it definitely starts coming to temperature now. We have to make sure that on the bottom we don't burn any of the milk. So again, we want to get this to a full boil. As soon as it boils, we can take it off and we can mix our uh, vinegar in. The vinegar is going to make the product curl. And uh, as long as we let that sit, as more cheese curds we're going to create. And um, after about a minute or two, um, after we have done the yogurt, we will go back to that and actually put it in the sieve and we'll see how it starts separating. Uh, and then we can make it more a dry or a more wet ricotta. That depends then on what you're going to be uh, using for. For fillings, probably more dry. If you do it maybe in sauces or if you make some dipping sauces maybe for a barbecue and so forth, you might want to get it a little bit more wetter. All right. As you can tell, this process takes a little bit. Again, that was about four cups of milk, whole milk. I bought uh, organic milk. You can use regular vitamin D milk. Two cups of heavy cream, about one teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. And uh, then I have ready already three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. All right, I can tell it's definitely changing. Get a little bit more foam up there. I can feel it in my hand and that um, it wants to boil, so we've we got to be close. And all we have to bring it up is to a boil and then we can take it off. Then we have the right temperature to make that reaction. All right. The next step we're going to be doing is we're going to prep for our yogurt. We have uh, for our yogurt um, milk, four cups of milk. We have a half a cup of dry milk. We have some honey and we have some uh, yogurt. Uh, some is actually about a half a cup of yogurt. <clears throat> and I can tell, look at this, it's boiling finally. Here we go. So we got this to a rolling boil now. As you can see, perfect. So we can take it off now. I put this on our cutting board. Steer in the vinegar and let that react. You can actually tell right away it starts reacting immediately. It curls the cream. All right, so we're going to let this sit for a couple minutes. And off we go to our yogurt. <clears throat> now yogurt we have to heat up as well. We have here a saucepan. Let 
and we need to get it to about 115. So we're taking the milk. And we have our dry milk. Dry milk is easily available in your grocery store. It might look a little bit more like a powder than this one looks more granulated. Either way, both work perfectly fine. Then we have our honey. Honey, honey. <laughs> All right. Which honey you put in there is really up to you. You can put some uh, flower honey or some forest honey or something in that direction. Maybe something from the farmer's market. All right. And we bring this to about 100. Take the temperature. So only about 100 to 115 uh, Fahrenheit. And this is where you want to keep it for about 3 to 12 hours. And how you're going to do that is you use uh, a thermos or a very low going um, hot plate or you can also use, uh, I've seen people using warming blankets to keep that mixture um, at 115, 110. So these things all work out just fine. So we're about at 100 now. Just took the temperature. What I'm doing now is I'm taking some of the liquid and put it into the yogurt. This is plain uh, Greek yogurt. If you would use the powder, you would do the same thing. You would take some of the warm liquid and put it into the powder, make that palatable, and then you actually put it into the mix. Here we go. We're putting the yogurt now in here. And mix this up. And we're going to keep this going at 100 Fahrenheit, 115 until it starts fermenting. Again, takes about 3 to um, 12 hours depending on how warm it is and how the um, bacteria of the yogurt works. <coughs> so the last thing is we have the ricotta cheese. So we have that prepared sieve with our layers of cheesecloth. And we have our cheese whey mix here. We're going to start pouring this in here. You can see there's a lot of whey and there's cheese curds already forming. So I get all the stuff out of here. <clears throat> and as you can tell, cheese curds are right here. 
and the whey is now slowly dripping through the cheesecloth and that sieve. This is something that's going to take a while. Cheese making is something uh, you have to be very patient for. So in the end, I'm going to put this over here. In the end, you're going to have three beautiful products. You're going to have your cream fresh. You're going to have your yogurt, which is going to come out to something like this. And you will have your ricotta cheese, which looks a little bit more uh, like cheese curds. Again, cream fresh, you can use uh, for pastries, uh, for cakes, fillings, for any kind of parfaits. You can put some more honey or some sugar on it. Yogurt, obviously, for your breakfast, uh, for parfaits again, for frozen yogurt if you make ice cream. And then you have your ricotta cheese, uh, which has a good use anywhere where you use pretty much mascarpone. So very simple recipes. Um, they will be up for you. And uh, if you have any questions, please always feel free to call us or email us anytime. And thank you so much for joining us today at Escafia Online.